the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how krishna and arjuna helped agni cure himself of his anorexia by devouring the kandava forest we also heard maya build a grand palace of illusions for yudhishthira at the advice of rishi narada yudhishthira now plans to perform the rajasuya sacrifice but krishna warned him that king jarasandha must be eliminated before he could contemplate any such thought Yudhishthira was curious to know more about Jarasandha. He asked Krishna, "Who is this Jarasandha? How could he terrorize you and still live on this earth?" Krishna said, "Let me tell you the story of Jarasandha's birth." In the kingdom of Magadha, there lived a king named Brihadratha. He had married the twin daughters of the king of Kashi and promised he would always treat them as equals but the queens failed to give him a son and the king was getting old one day the great sage chanda kaushik came to visit king brihadratha the king treated him with due respect and the sage was pleased with his hospitality chanda kaushik offered to give the king something in return the king told the sage of his wish to have a son The sage then gave the king a blessed mango fruit and said go and give this fruit to your queen by god's grace soon you will have a handsome son staying true to his words king bihadratha cut the mango into two halves and offered the pieces to his queens to eat but when the time arrived each queen gave birth to half a child as if the boy was split from head to toe in two equal parts each half had one eye one arm one foot and a divided torso the queens were scared to see such grotesque offsprings they asked the maids to abandon the body parts outside the palace the maids did as they were instructed and the two pieces of the boy lay in the trash by the roadside little later a demoness named jara was passing by she saw the two halves of a baby lying by the roadside curious she picked them up and put the two halves together to see how the baby looked as soon as she did that the two halves of the baby joined together to form a complete human child and the baby boy cried out in a loud roar Hearing the loud cry King Brihadratha and his wives came out and saw the baby in Jara's arms by then Jara had taken the form of a beautiful woman she held the baby and said Brihadratha your maids had abandoned your child but i saved him take him and rear him well he will grow up to a powerful king and rule the earth since the boy was joined by Jara the demoness he was named jarasandha jarasandha grew up to be a powerful king he was blessed by the sage chanda kaushik to rule over the kings and gained the power to witness lord shiva but he developed animosity with me since he was the father in law of kamsa whom i had killed earlier krishna paused for a while and then said Balarama and I killed two of Charasandha's associates Hansa and Dimbak now his time has come but nobody can defeat Charasandha in conventional warfare the only way to kill him is to fight him one on one in a hand to hand combat the three of us Bhima Arjuna and I should be able to destroy Charasandha i would come up with a strategy Bhima would fight him and Arjuna would protect us from external attacks. 
We would meet Charasandha alone and challenge him to wrestle any one of us. I am sure the arrogant king of Magadh would pick Bhima as his contender, for he wouldn't consider Arjuna or me to be worthy enough to fight him. And then Bhima could kill Jarasandha for sure. So, if you trust me, please permit them to go with me. Yudhishthira was ashamed to hear this. With folded palms he said, O Lord, please forgive me. How can I not trust you? You are our greatest friend, philosopher and guide. We feel privileged to be blessed by you. With your guidance and advice, I am sure we would succeed in killing Jarasandha, free the captive kings and complete my Rajasuya sacrifice. So please, prepare to live for Magadha with Arjuna and Bhima by your side. Disguised as graduate Brahmins, Bhima, Arjuna and Krishna left for Magadha. They travelled through the Gangetic plains and arrived at the gates of Giribraja, the capital of Magadha. But they didn't enter the city through the main gates. Let's enter the city through the Chaitaka mountains. The terrain is rough, but it will lead us straight to the rear entrance of the palace of Jarasandha, advised Krishna. They entered the palace through the back door, which was left unguarded. Inside the palace, they walked through the hallways almost unnoticed by all and entered the royal chamber without anybody stopping them. They stood in front of Jarasandha and said, O king, let peace be with you. Jarasandha was then observing a fast to perform a ritual. He was surprised to see the strange Brahmins, but still he paid his respects and asked them to sit down. Bhima, Arjuna and Krishna took their seats. Charasandha said, You look like Brahmins and you have dressed like Brahmins. You wear garlands and sandalwood paste like Brahmins. But I see you carry the marks of bow strings in your arms. You have also avoided the royal entrance to the palace and came through the back door. That raises questions about your identity. Tell me the truth. Who are you? Krishna looked straight into Jarasandha's eyes and with a calm voice he said, Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Bhaishyas, all may wear garlands and sandalwood paste. But you are right. We are Kshatriyas and our skills are with weapons rather than words. Clever people enter their enemy's house through the back door and their friend's house through the main door. You are our enemy. So, we prefer to use the rear entrance. But I don't recall you as my enemy. I haven't done any harm to you. So why do you take me to be your enemy? Asked Charasandha. Krishna replied, You have kept 86 Kshatriya kings as prisoners and plan to sacrifice them to Lord Shiva. We are here to stop you from doing such evil and free the kings from their bondage. You have no right to offer human beings a sacrifice. So, we have come here to kill you and save the kings. I am Krishna and these are the two sons of late King Pandu, Bhima and Arjuna. We challenge you to free the kings and surrender to Yudhishthira or die in our hands. Charasandha laughed and said, Krishna, you know that a winner has the right to do whatever he wants with the loot he conquers in a war. That's the norm. I defeated and captured these kings in legitimate war and now I wish to offer them to my lord. I cannot let them go free. If you want to fight, so be it. Tell me, what kind of fight do you prefer? A formal war in the battlefield with soldiers and armies or a hand-to-hand combat? Krishna said, We prefer hand-to-hand combat and you can choose any one of us to fight you. Charasandha looked at all three of them and said, Krishna, you and Arjuna are too weak to fight me. I can crush you in seconds. He looked at the muscular and heavy-set Bhima and said, 
Bhima is the right person to fight me. I choose him. A proper place for wrestling between Bhima and Jarasandha was identified. Priests and Brahmins blessed Jarasandha as they arrived the arena. Krishna blessed Bhima. Jarasandha took off his crown, tied his long hairs into a knot and stepped into the arena. The two giants looked at each other and circled the arena making loud growls like two angry lions. And then they pounced upon each other. They slapped and kicked each other while howling and grunting like wild elephants. The ground under them shook as they stomped the earth to intimidate each other. Sometimes Bhima would hurl Jarasandha to the ground, but he would jump back up on his feet and throw a thundering punch at Bhima's torso. A large crowd assembled to watch the great fight, which continued for days and nights. On the fourth day, Jarasandha became tired and took a break. Krishna then approached Bhima and said, You should not press an enemy who is tired, for the pressure might kill him. Fight with your arms and use as much force as he can tolerate. Bhima understood that Krishna was pointing out the weakness of Charasandha. He said, Krishna, this evil man has killed many of your beloved friends. He does not deserve your kindness. Krishna said, Bhima, then show the strength you have inherited from your father Pavandeva, the god of the winds. Bhima growled and picked up Jarasandha above his head and spun him hundred times before thrashing him into the ground. He then held Jarasandha's feet with his two arms and with a powerful tug tore him apart at the seam where he was joined by Jara the demoness. Jarasandha's death cry and Bhima's roar rang through the city and the people of Magadha shuddered in fear. Krishna, Bhima and Arjuna left the dead body of Jarasandha at the gates of the palace and went to the dungeons to free the captive kings. The grateful kings bowed down before Krishna and said, We cannot thank you enough for saving our lives. Tell us, what can we do for you? Krishna smiled and said, Yudhishthira will perform the Rajasuya sacrifice. I request you to pledge your allegiance to Emperor Yudhishthira. The kings all agreed and left the palace. Krishna then installed Jarasandha's son Sahadeva as the king of Magadha and then returned to Indraprastha along with Bhima and Arjuna. Yudhishthira prepared for the great sacrifice while Krishna took his leave and returned to Dwarka with the promise to come back during the Rajasuya ceremony. Arjuna called upon Yudhishthira and said, Brother, we have got rid of Jarasandha, but we still need to secure formal allegiance from all the kings before you can start your Rajasuya sacrifice. If you could grant us your permission, we, your brothers, would like to travel to each of these kingdoms and demand their allegiance and ask them to pay their taxes. If they don't accept, we declare war against them and force them to yield to you. Yudhishthira knew that this was the next step before he could start the sacrifice ritual. He granted them his permission to begin their conquest. Each of the four brothers took along a huge contingent of army comprising of elephants, horses, cavalry and foot soldiers. Arjuna went to the north, Bhima to the east, Sahadeva to the south and Nakula to the west. As Krishna had predicted, the brothers hardly met with any resistance. Most of the kings agreed to accept Yudhishthira as their emperor and offered golds and jewels as taxes. Few of those who didn't want to surrender were crushed by the mighty Pandava brothers and their army. The mighty king Bhagadatta of Pragyutishpura didn't give in without a fight. But later, he too was defeated by Arjuna. Karna, Shishupala and many other gallant kings of the east yielded to Bhima. Sahadeva had a tough fight with King Nila of the kingdom of Mahishmati. Nila was a friend of fire god Agni and with his support Nila became almost undefeatable. But Sahadeva placed Agni with his worship and Nila 
agreed to support Yudhishthira. Soon the four brothers returned from their conquests to the capital Indraprastha with huge amounts of wealth for the new emperor Yudhishthira. Rajasuya sacrifice is a long and expensive ceremony. The performer of the sacrifice must offer expensive gifts and pay honorariums to the thousands of invited Brahmins and other dignitaries. Arrangements must be made to host the royal guests who would stay for weeks. Thousands of men and women would be needed to serve the guests and take care of their needs. Halls, mansions and dormitories need to be built for their lodging. Huge kitchens need to be built to cook their food. Performers and musicians must be retained to entertain them. Besides, it was mandated that all the rituals of the Rajasuya sacrifice must be performed with absolute perfection. Any mistake would make the sacrifice worthless. Hence, hundreds of learned priests and sages need to be employed to conduct the yagna. A huge hall had to be built where the fire sacrifice was to be performed. The hall should have adequate seats for the guests who would like to watch the proceedings. Yudhishthira asked his accountants to give him a budget. He then checked if he had enough resources at his disposal. Satisfied, he began the process of conducting the ceremony. Invitations were sent out to all the kings and royalties. Krishna, along with his family, arrived from Dwarka. Yudhishthira bowed in front of him and said, O oh Krishna, it is for your blessing I am able to think of performing this difficult sacrifice. Please give me your permission. Krishna held Yudhishthira's hand and said, You are the most deserving person for this sacrifice. Please go ahead with your duties and let me know how I can serve you. Vyasa arrived to serve as the main priest. From Hastinapur came Bhishma, Vidura, Drona, Kripa, Ashwatthama, Shakuni and many others. Duryodhana and his 99 brothers also accompanied them. Duryodhana's friend Karna came from Anga. Yudhishthira's father-in-law Drupad and his son Trishtadumna arrived from Panchal. Hundreds of kings and royalties poured into the city from all directions. Soon, the city of Indraprastha was teeming with kings from all over the country. Yudhishthira greeted Bhishma, Drona, Kripa and other elders and said, I took upon a huge task and without your blessings and cooperation, I won't succeed. Please help me. Then he delegated several of the tasks to his relatives and friends. Dusashana was made responsible for food distribution, while Ashwatthama would receive and greet the Brahmins. Bhishma and Drona would decide on the difficult issues and tasks. Dhritarashtra's charioteer, Sanjay, would serve the invited kings and royalties. Kripa would be responsible for the royal treasury and Vidura would make all financial disbursements. Duryodhana was asked to receive gifts on Yudhishthira's behalf and Krishna took it upon himself to cleanse the feet of all the Brahmins. The royal guests offered huge sums of gold and silver as donations for the ceremony. And when one king saw the other pour in wealth into the coffers, he would pour in more to show off his riches. Soon the coffers overflowed and the amount collected was good enough to bear the expenses of the Rajasuya ceremony. With the blowing of the conch shells and ringing of the gongs, Narada, Vyasa, and the other sages entered the hall. They were followed by the invited kings and brahmins. When the sages, kings and brahmins took their seats, Yudhishthira and his brothers approached the center stage and bowed before the guests to ask for their permission to begin the Rajasuya sacrifice. The sages raised their hands and said, Let the great sacrifice begin. The stories of Mahabharata is written, directed, and told by Shudipta Bomek. Audio engineering, original music, and sound design by Avi Ziv. 
The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any podcast catcher. Thank you.